Good morning, everyone. Before I start, I need to make a confession. Um, after Kerry's talk this morning, I am a biophysical scientist. <laughs> <laughs> but I do wholeheartedly believe that for the reef, we do need to integrate the scientific disciplines and not just the scientific disciplines, but also the different knowledge systems. So the Western science, traditional and experiential knowledge. And uh, hopefully my talk, you will see that today, but um, I've only got 10 minutes, so I better get started. Yeah. Today I'm talking about risk. Um, I am with the Australian Institute of Marine Science. These are my teammates here that are my co-authors. And um, we are with the Reef Restoration Adaptation Program or RAP, and we are concentrating on the risk of the interventions. To begin today, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands where we meet today and the whole of the Great Barrier Reef, of the elders past, present and emerging. Where I live and work is the traditional home of the Naro people. And this is on the islands and the coastlines of what we now call the Whitsundays. This photo I took on was on Naro Sea Country. The acknowledgement of country reminds us that the Great Barrier Reef is a socio-ecological system with connections in time and space between people, organisms, habitats, and the physical environment. It forms a complex array of interactions and interdependencies. This is evident in the values of the reef, the environment, biodiversity, heritage, culture, social, and economic. When we think about risk to the reef, therefore we need to think about it in this holistic context. A risk to one component, for example, the ecological systems, can therefore mean a risk to other components, for example, the human systems. The decision makers face a difficult task ahead. Ahead of us is a future of expedient change where the norm, regularity, and consistencies of our historical knowledge is quickly being replaced with new records, irregularities, and uncertainty. It's a truly difficult landscape for policy and management decision-making. Fundamentally, we need to reduce climate change and to continue to manage local and regional threats to the reef. However, this may no longer be enough. Re the Reef Restoration Adaptation Program provides an additional set of management solutions to accelerate recovery and improve resilience for the reef. RAP is a consortium of partnerships across multiple organizations and fields of expertise. The proposed interventions that are in development are presented across the bottom of this figure. And each represents a sub-program of RAP. But to ensure these interventions can be successful in, the, sorry, in their interaction with the socio-ecological system, we need to consider them from multiple angles. How can they be deployed? What decision support and information will managers require? And central to this talk today, what are the social and cultural considerations and the potential risks? These angles are considered, as you can see in the diagram, in these top cross-cutting programs that draw from the different scientific disciplines to create an integrated and multidisciplinary program. RAP aims to develop interventions that are scientifically proven, ecologically effective, technically feasible, economically viable, and socially acceptable. However, inherent to the intended and positive outcomes, which are the benefits, there may also be unintended and negative consequences or risks. But we cannot throw out these technologies just because they may carry some risks, particularly when the impacts of the alternative, that is not deploying any new interventions, may in fact be worse. Rather, we need to find that sweet spot. That maximizes benefits while minimizing the risks. 
Through research and development, RF is assessing the risks and benefits so that decision makers can weigh up against these. Getting that, it's getting that right is absolutely critical. For that reason, RAP formed an independent expert group as part of its governance structure to oversee and provide an additional level of assurance in assessing risks. The Intervention Risk Review Group, which is a mouthful, so from now on, I'm just going to call it the group, is an interdisciplinary group covering social, cultural, economic, biological, and policy landscapes of the Great Barrier Reefs and, Le and reefs globally. It's led by an independent chair, Sue Barrell, and their role is to support decision-making by reviewing and advising on the potential risks and benefits and the options for risk management. Further information on our members, you can find on the RAP website, which contains their biographies. Key for the group's work, is using structured and deliberative processes that focus on robustness, transparency, and independence. The group was formed at the end of last year and have met through a series of online meetings and workshops. They've learned from the RAP experts and about the technical, ecological, and human dimensions of the interventions. From the human dimensions angle, this has included learnings on social license to operate, cultural heritage, and the importance of good engagement practices. While this, the interventions are still in development, the RAP teams have been investigating what social and cultural risks might arise in the future if the interventions are deployed. For example, there might be biocultural risks and, and risks in moving materials between sea countries. As I mentioned earlier, impacts to the ecological components can have both positive and negative impacts to the human systems. A negative impact might be a change in aesthetics. A positive impact might be helping tourism or helping traditional owners on sea country. But these can also have negative impacts. For instance, where do you locate the deployments? And this may lead to competition between groups. There are also perceived risks. For example, the reef is no longer natural or perceived no longer to be natural, or that reefs will become dependent on human interventions. Importantly, RAP is looking at how we can manage and reduce potential social and cultural risks early on. This has included the early involvement of traditional owners, stakeholders, communities, and the regulators in the co-design deployment and evaluation of proposed interventions. The work in this space has been really thought provoking as we consider what this uncertain future might hold for us all. I highly recommend catching some of the other presentations that are being presented in this symposium today. <clears throat> that are on some of this work that RAP is doing. Getting back to the group, they are using a custom designed risk review process. It will be an iterative, iterative, iterative process between our app teams and the group, which helps with quality assurance and risk management. While also being able to continually progress the development of the interventions. It identifies and estimates both risks and benefits against what the future state of the reef would be like without the interventions. For some areas, one of the challenges will be having very limited knowledge and data. And so what we've done is built into the capacity to look for knowledge gaps and report these to the R&D teams. But it may also mean that we need to use both quantitative and qualitative processes, such as expert elicitation. I'm keep the public informed of the group's activity, the group provides statements and communiques on the RAP website. But I think I'm running out of time to go through each of these points. But if you would like to, hear, to see more about what the, uh, the group has been up to, please go to the RAP website. And just to finish up, thanks. Just to recap on that. Um, the points that I've made today is that the, sorry. 
recapping my presentation. The IRAP interventions will be thoroughly evaluated for their ec ecological, social, cultural, and economic risks following the risk review process with oversight from an independent expert group. The group will provide an additional layer of assurance and transparency to the risk review process. RAPs R&D teams are investigating and assessing social and cultural risks and benefits of the interventions, which the group will draw from as part of the risk review process. Traditional owners, stakeholders, communities, and regulators are being involved early on to help reduce and manage social and cultural risks. I'll just leave my acknowledgements there. Thank you.